Do you want to take your videos to the next level by making them interactive? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to add interactivity to your video projects without coding using the video editing application Camtasia. Hey, it's Mike with more tips and tools to help you create engaging, informative, and educational video. And if it's your first time here, make sure you hit the big subscribe button and don't forget to click the little bell icon so you don't miss a thing. Interactivity seems to be the holy grail of online media these days. Whether you're making educational videos or product demos for your video marketing. But up until now, creating an interactive video was beyond the reach of most of us. It required coding and some fairly sophisticated and complex software. Well, that's no longer the case with software application packages like Camtasia. Camtasia is a screen capture and video editing application, but it also has the ability to create interactive videos using a feature called Hotspots. In a nutshell, Hotspots allow you to create interactive areas in your video. Let's hop on into Camtasia so I can show you how Hotspots work. So here we are in Camtasia. This is Camtasia 3 for Mac. There's also a Windows version of Camtasia that's up to version 9. Hotspots work exactly the same way in both versions, so whether you're on Mac or Windows, this tutorial will be useful. So I've created this demo project here. I have this video on my timeline, and we're going to make it interactive using Hotspots. So to get started, I'll go over to the Media panel, and I'll scroll down and select the Visual Effects section, not the Interactivity section as you'd expect. If you go to the Interactivity section, you'll only find Camtasia's Interactive Quiz feature, not Hotspots. Not terribly intuitive, I know. You'd think you'd find Hotspots in the Interactivity section. We have to go to the Visual Effects section, and there, at the bottom, is Interactive Hotspots. Okay, let's add a hotspot to our project. To do that, I'll click and drag a hotspot onto the timeline, and... What's going on here? Where's the hotspot? Well, what you need to understand is that hotspots are not an object unto themselves. They don't exist on their own in Camtasia. To make a hotspot work, you need to add it to another object. You can add hotspots to pretty much any type of media object in your project. A shape, a piece of text, an image, even a video clip. This will make more sense if I show it to you. So let's back up. Remember, hotspots need to be attached to a media object. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an object for the hotspot. I'm going to create a button, and I'm going to do that using a callout. So I'm going to scroll up in the media panel and select annotations and select the callouts section. And we have this wide selection of callouts. I'm just going to grab this simple callout here, and I'm going to click and drag it down onto my timeline and line it up with the end of this section of the video. As you can see, a callout is just some text with a shape for a background. We can edit the text in this callout by simply double-clicking it. Then I'll enter button 1 as my label. And I can place this callout button anywhere on the screen by clicking and dragging it here in the canvas. I'll just place it here for now. To make this callout button work like a button, I'll add a hotspot to it. So I'll go to Visual Effects and scroll down to the bottom to Interactive Hotspot. I'll click and drag the Interactive Hotspot and drop it onto my callout button in the timeline. You can also drag the hotspot onto the actual callout on the canvas. 
So I'll drop the hotspot on the callout button. And now this callout button is clickable. Okay, so our hotspot is in place. With our callout button selected, have a look way over here at the properties panel. Make sure you have the visual properties tab selected. And when you scroll down, you'll see you have settings for interactive hotspot. This is where we make our hotspot actually do something. The first setting is pause at end, and it's checked by default. What that means is when the playhead reaches the end of the callout clip containing the hotspot, the playhead will stop and wait until the hotspot is clicked. When the hotspot is clicked, one of four events can occur. And those four events are represented by these four choices here. You'll notice the fourth choice down here, click to continue, is selected by default. This means that when the user clicks the hotspot, the playhead will resume playing from where it stopped. If we select URL and enter a URL or web address in this field here, when the user clicks the callout button, that web page will appear in a new browser window. Marker jumps the playhead to a specific marker on the timeline when the user clicks the hotspot. To create a marker, you can go over here to this little arrow at the end of the timeline. Clicking that opens this new track in the timeline, and you can use this new track to place markers. So if I select Marker and run my cursor along this track, I get this blue cross icon, which represents a marker. So I can drag to a spot, click, and that creates a marker on the timeline. You can also place markers directly on media clips in your timeline. You just find a spot on the clip and click, and that places a marker. And if you select your marker, then go over to its properties in the properties panel, you can rename it to keep things organized. I'm going to rename mine button one. To get out of marker placement mode, you just go back to that arrow at the end of the timeline and click it to close the marker track. Now, if I go back and select my callout hotspot to bring up its properties in the properties panel and select marker, you'll see this drop down menu that displays all the markers in your project. So here's the marker we created, button one. I'll select that. So when the user clicks the callout hotspot, the playhead will jump to the button one marker. Below marker, we have time. If you select this option, when the user clicks the hotspot, the playhead will jump to a specific time code in your project. And you enter that time code in these fields right here. So how do you know what time code to enter? Well, you can find the current time code of the playhead right beside it. It's these numbers right here. So you just drag the playhead to the spot on your timeline that you want to jump to, make note of the time code, then enter the time code over here in the time field. Now you've probably noticed this test button down here. You use this to make sure the hotspot is linking to the correct destination. For example, we currently have time selected and this time code that we want the playhead to go to when the user clicks the callout. Well, let's see if the hotspot actually goes to that time code. And we can do that by clicking test. And the playhead jumps to the time code we entered. We can test it with the marker option. Let's select the marker option and select our one and only marker button one from the drop down list and we'll go down and click test. And the playhead jumps to our button one marker. Let's try URL. I'll select the URL option and enter the URL of my website. I'll move down and click test. 
and a browser window opens up, and there's the home page of my site. The testing feature is really useful, but how can we be sure all of our hotspots are working properly? How can we really test the interactivity of our project? Well, unfortunately, you can't preview your interactive project here in the Camtasia editor. All you can do is use the test button to test the targets for the hotspots. To truly test the interactivity of your Camtasia project, you need to publish it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video so I can build out this project with a few more hotspots. And when I come back, I'll publish the project so we can test it out. Okay, I'm back. I added a few different types of hotspots to our project with additional markers, as you can see. So let's publish this to see if everything is working. To publish your interactive project, be sure to save it first. Then go up to Share on the top menu bar and select Local File from the drop down. You'll get this Export dialog window. So I'm going to name our project Interactive Test. We'll export it to the desktop. We'll leave everything set to the defaults except we'll select Export as Web Page. You need to have this option selected in order to export interactive projects out of Camtasia. You'll see why in just a moment. In the Windows version of Camtasia, the export process looks a bit different. When you go up to the top menu and select Share, and then select Local File, you get this Production Wizard panel. You want to click the drop-down arrow and select MP4 with Smart Player up to 480p, MP4 with Smart Player up to 720p, or MP4 with Smart Player up to 1080p, depending on the final resolution of your video. The key is the Smart Player. It's what makes the interactivity happen in your exported video. So I'm going to select MP4 with Smart Player up to 720p because that is the resolution of my demo project. You get a description of the export preset you selected. And if you look down here in the description area, you can see that it says interactive features such as TOC, which is Table of Contents, closed captions, quizzes, and hotspots are included in the video. Then you just go down here and hit Next. And then on this screen, you give your project a name, select or create a destination folder, and hit Finish. Back over on the Mac, I'll hit Export and Camtasia will generate the necessary files. Once Camtasia is done exporting, I'll go find our published project on the desktop. So here's our published project. It's a folder. And if we double click it to open it, we'll find a web page called index.html and a folder labeled media. If we open the media folder, we'll find a collection of files, JavaScript files, video files, all kinds of different scripts. These files make up our interactive project. So if you wanted to share your interactive Camtasia project online, you'd need to grab this folder containing the index.html web page and the media folder and upload it to your web server or Amazon S3 or Screencast.com, which is a hosting service offered by TechSmith, the makers of Camtasia. Once your project is uploaded, you'd create a link to this index.html page, and that link will launch your interactive project in a browser window. However, you don't need to upload these files to a web server in order to test your interactive Camtasia project. You can test it right on your computer, locally, by just double-clicking this index.html file. 
your interactive Camtasia project will load into your default web browser and you can test the interactivity. So let's see what we've got. I'll hit the play arrow to start our interactive video. A good quality webcam can be a versatile and cost-effective tool for creating high-quality learning videos if you know how to use it properly. If you want to get the best possible video out of these little cameras, follow these four steps. I'm recording right now using the Blue Yeti Pro USB microphone, placed just out of shot. If you want to drastically improve the quality of your webcam video, invest in a good external microphone. Just one last really important point regarding hotspots. I'm just going to go down on the timeline here and zoom in a bit so that you can see better. Now remember this pause at end setting in the hotspots properties panel? It causes the playhead to stop when it reaches the end of the hotspot object on the timeline. Well, in order for this setting to work properly in the final video, the hotspot object on the timeline needs to be at least half a second or 15 frames long. Any shorter and the interactive video player won't have enough time to register the pause properly. And your video won't pause at the end of that hotspot. It'll just keep going right through or it'll pause a few frames late. Just something to keep in mind when you're creating hotspots. The ability to add interactive hotspots to just about any media object in Camtasia opens up a lot of creative possibilities. With some solid planning and a bit of imagination, you could create a pretty, engaging, and immersive video experience. Well, that's it for this video experience. I hope you found value in it. And if you want to discover more tips and tools for creating engaging, informative, and educational video, be sure to hit the big subscribe button on the screen so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.